Hello, this is Reza Rad from Radicad. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to create a value distrib distribution report in Power BI uh, for your column profiling and seeing something like this, that you see all columns in a table. When you hover on it, you'll see the tooltip that shows uh, how many uh, value, how many count of each value you have in, uh, in that uh, data set, a value distribution using Power Query in Power BI. Let's see how it works. To understand how this works, let's first look at what is the profiling. In Power BI, you can go to Transform Data, which will get you to Power Query Editor. In Power Query Editor, if you have a table like this table, um, and you want to understand, for example, what is the value distribution in color column of the DIM product, you can go to the view tab, enable column profile, and there are some information about your columns, as well as this very useful chart here saying that how the values in your column is distributed here, I can see many values not applicable, then black, red, and very few with gray. So if we want to have something like this, as a Power BI developer or Power Query developer, we can easily use this. However, sometimes it's helpful for your users to have this kind of information. They can see the, uh, the value distribution, they understand the quality of the data, and they might be able to go and fix something in the data source itself. It's always valuable to give users the ability to uh, to understand this. And users, you can't expect them to come to Power Query Editor and do this kind of things. You need to provide this inside Power BI. And previously, I have explained how to uh, create a profiling report. The link down in the description is to blog article and video about that, how uh, you can create a report showing all columns in a table and the number of errors you have. Um, count of rows, how many null values you have, the minimum, maximum value, standard deviation, things like that. Now, I'm going to show you how you can add also something like a distribution like this. For example, I can click on color and see how many values of each of these I have. Uh, to do this, first you need to be in Power Query Editor. We'll start with this example. Let's say I have product table. Uh, this product table has this many columns. It's about 35 columns. Now, what I'm going to do is to uh, create a distribution table for that. A distribution table should look like this table, uh, a table that has um, two columns, basically. One of them is the name of each column in the product table. As you can see, these are actually column headers in the product table. Product key and color is also one of them and another column, which is values of that column. These values are as a list here, uh, which means if I, for example, click on this list, it gives me uh, all the colors. You can see that as a list here. You need to click somewhere blank in this uh, area to see that not on the list itself because it will otherwise uh, drill down into that area. Um, okay, now I'm going to show you how we can achieve something like that. The first thing, of course, is to create a new blank query. When you create a new blank query, you can write a script like this. Uh, this formula will give you a list. This is curly brackets at the beginning and end means that we are creating a list. Our list starts with this number, zero is the starting number. These two dots means start this until and this part is actually until what? So we are saying that table.columnCount, very useful function giving us the count of columns in the table, minus one. The reason for that is that we want to use this as an index for each of the list items and in Power Query index always start from zero. That is why I didn't uh, start from one and that is why I said a minus one at the end because the last item in the list, if we have 35 columns, would be 34. So that is why I said minus one. If you are interested in learning about how to generate list or how to navigate in list and things like that, I have another uh, blog article and video about that. Link to that is down in the description below as well. 
this will give me a list like this. So as soon as you write that script and all of these formulas are in the uh, link in the description below as well, uh, it gives you a list uh, for the number of columns you have. For example, I have 35 columns. It's a list of 35 items. However, the list starts from zero ends at 34. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is to convert it to a table and add columns to that. One column would be the name of column headers, another would be the values of that. To do that, first you have to go to list tools, transform it to a table. Once you convert, convert it to a table, it would look like very much the same. The only difference is that now it is a column and the difference, another difference is that now you can add columns. All of these transformations are now available to you. So what I can do is I can go to add column and add a custom column. I'm going to add the header of each column, the name of column headers in each row. For that, I'll add a custom column. The custom column that I add is as this. And not a really complicated formula, and it is using this very useful function called table.columnNames. Table.columnNames gets the product, gets the table name, uh, gets the table itself as an input. So I'm saying that from the product, give me all the column names. This will create a list of column names. 35 items would be in that list. Then I use this part, which is saying that from that list, give me this index. Column one. Column one is that index we created zero to uh, thirty-four. For example, when I say table dot column names the product zero, that would be the name of first column. When I say table dot column names the product one, that would be name of column two, and all the way to the last column. And I call this column name. Uh, this will create something like this. As you can see, I have column names identify it correctly here just to uh, show you again against the dim product table i'll back i'll go back to dim product and you can see these are exactly those column names so i managed to get to this stage so far i got the column names now the next step is to add the values of that column for that i'll go to add column custom column again and this time my custom column would be using another function uh, through this um, example, actually, you learned so far three useful table functions. Uh, one was table um, dot, uh, let me just show you all here. Uh, one was table dot column count, giving you the count of columns. Another was uh, table dot column names, giving you the list of column names. And this one, which is even more useful than any of all of those is table dot two columns. Table dot two columns will convert the content of each column to a list. So the result of this table would be a list of lists. Uh, each inner list is the values of a column and each outer list is a column itself. Um, I use the same method of providing the index, which will give me actually the ability to uh, to go to each of those items. So this is that list generated. Each list itself is the values of a column. Uh, here it shows you just a limited number of values because it's preview, uh, but this would be a full list already. Like for example, when I click on colors, it shows me the values in the color column. When I click on size, it shows me the values in the size column. Uh, note that I'm clicking on a blank area here, not on the list itself. So this will generate that for me and the function for that is table dot two columns. Now that I have this, the last few steps is simple. First, I'll remove this column. I don't need that. And um, then I'll expand this one because I have to have all values in one column so that I can get their distribution grouped by values. So I'll expand this into new rows. That will give me a table with all columns and all values. More some, something like actually like unpivoted style of a table if, if we had something possible. So it gives me something like that. Now all I need to do is I want the column distribution, the column value distribution, which means I need to group this data set by these two by column name, which is actually the column header and the column value, which is the value in that column. I can group it by these two. When I group it, my group by configuration would be 
based on these two elements I'm grouping them and uh, the default operation of group by is it gives you the count of rows and that is what we are after anyway so it gives me the count of rows and uh, here is the count of rows so this distribution table is ready and one thing to notice is that this may take quite a lot of time if you have a huge table so i strongly recommend you to reduce the number of rows reduce the number of columns to whatever is important for you to do um, data profiling and value distribution otherwise this might take quite a while after doing that then i can close and apply load this into power bi and then what i've done here is just to create a simple report page i created the page i used column values as the axis of chart count as the values of that um, and that gives me something like this i put a slicer here with a single select only uh, and I used column values for the slicer itself. So as a result, I can click on a column, like color, I'll see the values in that column and how many of each is. For example, we just have uh, four records with white color, one record with gray color, something quite useful to understand for your users because it would show them the quality of your data. So you can users can easily go and select any of these and get uh, distribution information. You can also create a tooltip page report. I've explained about that in another video, how to create report tooltip page and things like that. Uh, you can create that, pass the column name, and then in your profiling report, if you have done my other examples of creating profiling report, as a result, then when you go to a, a row here, the tooltip will show you the distribution of values in there. So quite helpful uh, method for your users to understand your data better. Now, a few last thing to mention here, data profiling or column distribution or exception report, all of these are essentials. They are not luxury items. Consider these to be added in most of your reports. Another thing is that these can be very slow, especially if your tables are big. Make sure you reduce the number of columns or rows to focus only on that part that needs more attention. Uh, check out my other um, blog and videos about how to create exception reporting when error happens, because if error happens, you might get un unwanted behavior in your distribution table. And then the last thing is that this method I showed you is doing it only for one table. If you want to apply this for another table, uh, what to do? I'm going to uh, create another video uh, after this as a next uh, part of this series and that would provide you with a function you can um, call that function for any of the tables that you want and then get the distribution result out of it i hope this helps you in your power bi reporting if you like this video go ahead and subscribe into our youtube channel we have weekly videos on power bi and ai thank you